Hello and welcome back to Financial Madness, where we look at all things personal finance. In today's video, we will be looking at how to understand your NHS pensions total reward statement, which can be viewed via the Total Reward Statement Portal. The Total Reward Statement is an annual statement that outlines all your benefits and key information for anyone who is enrolled in the NHS pension scheme. In this video, I will be giving you a step-by-step -step guide on how to understand and use the key features of the Total Reward Statement. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. Pow! Firstly, what is the NHS Total Reward Statement or TRS? It actually takes the form of a document as well as an online portal that provides members of the NHS pension key details about their pension, such as their pension will pay, their contributions, and other key details we'll go through shortly. If you are one of my many subscribers for my NHS pension videos, then you should really consider accessing this information on an annual basis, as it will prove really helpful to understand what your pension situation looks like, which in turn can help plan for your retirement. It's always best to start. To access your total reward statement, you need to log in via ESR or the electronic staff record, which normally gets set up when you first join. If your employer does not have access to ESR, you can request a copy of your statement by emailing the following address. And if you don't have access to the portal, but get a paper copy instead, don't worry, this video is still going to be relevant as the information on the portal should be identical to what you get on paper, or at least close enough. Once you do manage to log in, this is when things get way more interesting. Your life also gets way more interesting when you hit that subscribe button. Now, before we get into it, I do get a lot of questions on my NHS pension videos, and I do my best to respond to as many as I can, but sometimes it can be difficult to find the time. So what I have done to help make this video super clear is summarized some of those key questions, the ones that you see on your screen now. And as we go through this demo, whenever I touch upon the answer to one of those questions, I will flag it like so just to make sure that there's no confusion and the explanation is as clear as possible. Not all the questions can be answered using the portal, but I'll address those at the very end. Right, with that said, once you are in, you'll be presented with the following statement screen. And within the screen, you are presented with the following summary page. Please note that I am anonymizing key bits of information for obvious reasons. I'm also going to breeze through the first two pages as these are pretty self-explanatory and not the focal point of this portal. So if we quickly go through this first page under personal details, we see, well, your personal details, such as your name, date of birth, and address. And just below this is your financial summary. So this part is basically an annual view of your entire benefits package, which is broken down by your salary, overtime pay, and your employer's contribution to your pension. This should align to the pay slips that you would have received throughout this tax period, which in this example is between April 2021 to 2022. The total reward statements actually refreshed every 31st of August. And as of the time of this recording, that means the 22 to 23 version should be available in a couple of weeks. If we move over to the employer benefits tab, we are able to see details regarding your job title, your salary, pay band. And again, down below, you can see your payment breakdowns. This should tie back to what we saw on the personal details page, minus the employer's contribution amount. So we won't go over that again. And beneath this is a list of additional employee benefits that you are entitled to. And finally, we are at the juicy bit, the NHS pension tab. So if we look at the tabs up top, we can see in this example, this individual is enrolled in the 2015 scheme. Now this is what the majority of the current NHS workers will see. But if you have enrolled in the legacy scheme, such as the 2008 and or 1995 scheme, then you will see separate tabs for each pension enrollment. Now there are differences among all three schemes. And in this video, we'll be focusing solely on the 2015 scheme. But please do drop me a comment down below if you do have any questions about one of the legacy schemes. So within this 2015 tab, just below this, we have options to view the annual benefit statement and pensionable earnings statement. Sticking to the annual benefit statement tab, we can see your NHS membership number, the date at which you enrolled in the NHS pension scheme, your normal pension age, which is the earliest you can access your NHS pension without penalty. The 2015 scheme follows the state pension age, which depending on when you were born, will be between the ages of 66 to 68. You have your pensionable pay. Now this is going to be slightly different from your salary. So your salary refers to the amount of money you as an employee earn before any tax deductions. And this includes your basic pay plus overtime and any other allowances you may have. 
Your pension will pay, however, is a subset of your salary. And this is the number that is actually used to calculate your pension benefits in the scheme. And normally this would exclude any overtime you have done. So therefore your pension benefits will be calculated on just your basic pay alone. So if we go back to your payment breakdown, you should be able to tie back your pension will pay number if you exclude overtime or OT from the total. And the final part of this section is the last time this statement was updated. And as you can see, this statement is normally updated to the end of the financial year. And as I mentioned earlier, it normally gets refreshed every 31st of August. So this will soon be changing to March 2023. Now that we have gone through the initial list, beneath this we have a section on your standard benefits. Now this is where you can see the current value of your pension benefits. Now it says current, but that doesn't mean current at the point of today. It means current as per the last updated date. So in this case, this was correct as of the 31st of March 2022. So first up we have the pension. This means if we were to reach the normal pension age and no longer contribute to the scheme, our income would be this amount per year for life from the NHS pension scheme. We have a lump sum, which in this case is left blank, but it is further explained down below. Below this, we have the adult dependent pension. Now, in case you didn't know, one of the benefits of the NHS pension is that if you were to pass away, a pension would still be paid out to your spouse, civil partner, or nominated partner, although at a reduced amount. So the number presented here is how much they would get per year if you passed away. And lastly, we have your hypothetical annuity cost, which isn't super useful to you, but kind of gives you an idea of how much your pension benefits are worth. This is basically saying if you didn't have a defined benefits pension, but you wanted to replicate these benefits through a private company via a defined contribution pension, for example, you would have to fork out this amount of money. The way that they calculate this is unclear, but it gives you an idea of how much your benefits are worth outside of the NHS pension scheme realm but you can't exchange your pension for this amount of money. It's just purely hypothetical. Down below, we have the benefits if you were to take the maximum lump sum. So if you did not know, at retirement, you are able to exchange a proportion of your pension into a tax-free cash lump sum. The maximum you can go is 25% of your pension benefits converted into cash. Now there is a formula on how they do this, but please note it is not 25% of the hypothetical annuity cost quoted above. So in this example, if we focus on the lump sum amount first, let's say it was 10,000 pounds, we will get this paid as a tax-free lump sum. And by taking this lump sum payment, your pension income will reduce as a consequence. And the new number will be stated here alongside pensions. The adult dependent pension should not be affected, but if it is, the amount will also be stated here. Below this, we have your death benefits. So in the event of your death, the NHS pension scheme may provide a lump sum payout as well as a pension benefit to your spouse, civil partner, or nominated partner. Now there are conditions to when a tax-free lump sum may be payable, and they generally follow if you died while still being an active member of the scheme, if you have been in receipt of your pension, but for less than five years. If you fit either of these criteria, then the figures here will be how much your partner is likely to receive, and this money is usually tax-free. Below this, we have your nominated individual for death benefits. If no nomination is provided, this will automatically go to your spouse or civil partner. However, if you want to ensure a non-legal partner gets benefits, then you need to make sure that you fill out a nomination form. And I'll put a link to this form down below. And underneath this, we have your NHS pension contributions for the year. So this is your annual contributions for whatever year was stated above. So in this case, it was during the 21-22 tax year. And here you can see how much you and your employer have contributed to the scheme. Remember, the amount of money you put in doesn't affect how much money you get out, as this is a defined benefits pension, which means your retirement salary is based on your salary throughout your career and your years of service. The number that you see here is just the cost for being involved in the scheme. Do check out my NHS pension video if you do want to understand how the benefits are calculated. And lastly, we have the pensionable earning statement, which is an overview of your pensionable pay during your time in the scheme, the amount of pension benefits you have earned throughout the years, along with the revaluation rate which was given to your benefits. This is the rate at which your pensions are adjusted to take into account inflation. So here you can actually see how your pension benefits are calculated. If you were to add up your pensions earned whilst also taking into account the revaluation rates, you'll be able to tie back to the pension benefits number we saw earlier, or at least get close enough to the number. I actually tried replicating the calculations offline on a Google Sheet, and I was a little bit off. 
I put some hypothetical numbers in a Google Sheet here, which I'll link down below. So if anyone does want to review my workings and correct them, then it'll be great if you could share this with the community. But otherwise, I am able to tie back with a very small margin of error. Cool, so that is the main crux of the total reward statement. If you do need any additional help, they do have a help menu up top, which provides some FAQs and a way to contact the team for any queries you may have. And on the left-hand side, you can actually download a copy of your TRS document. Now it is definitely worth saving a copy down each year as the portal only displays the latest year's information. So it might be a good habit to download a copy so you can keep track of all the key information related to that year. Now, although we have come to the end of our TRS demo, there are still some unanswered questions from my list that I showed you earlier. So let's go through them. So the first question is, how do you get an estimate of what your pension benefits are likely to be at retirement? Now, the answer to this question can actually be found on this website. If you are looking for an early retirement, so retiring before your normal pension age, but after your minimum pension age, they suggest you download this calculator and use the information you can get on your TRS. Otherwise, for all other estimates, you will have to apply through an estimate request form, which can take up to 40 weeks to complete and can come with a fee. If you do want to go through this form in more detail, again, the link is in the description box down below. Alternatively, for a rough estimate, use my NHS pension calculator for free. You can input your pension pays over the past few years, along with their revaluation rates, and then do an educated guess of how the future looks like. It probably won't be as accurate as the 40 week one, but is a good starting point nonetheless. The next question that wasn't answered was how can you make additional contributions to your NHS pension? Now, I already did a video on how this works, which I'll link now. So do check that out if you want to learn all the methods of contributing more to your pension. But to apply for any of these methods, it usually requires you to fill out an application form and or reach out to an email address or contact number. Check out this page, which lists all the ways you can make additional contributions along with how you can apply. Another question that wasn't answered is how to apply for transferring out of the NHS pension scheme, as well as transferring an older pension into the NHS pension scheme. So both options would require you to read a transfer in and out guide, which has an application form at the very back for you to fill out. I'm not going to go into the details of the rules surrounding this, as this will be an entire video in itself. But if you do want me to go through it in more detail, please do let me know down below. And finally, how do you apply for retirement? So again, this requires you to fill out particular forms and send these forms to the NHS pension team. Luckily for you, I recently made a video on how to do this. So do check that out if you want to learn more. Cool, so that is it for this week's video. If you do have any questions regarding the NHS pensions, please do let me know down below. And remember to like and subscribe. See you later, bye.